Chingford, London, England. Home of St. Fabian Tower. A 60s high-rise tower block. Once dream places to live. 40 years on, it's the stuff of housing nightmares. But in 48 hours, the nightmare will be over, thanks to the controlled demolition group. Meet Dick Green, ex-army, 15 years on the job. Mick Williams, 30 years experience, hooked on explosions since the age of five. Darren Palin, managing director, the man who can. Together, they're a dream team. They'll demolish anything in their way, but it takes planning, preparation, and precision. Three, two, or one, fire now. The team have been working on St. Fabian Tower for two months, and they're planning to turn it from this into this in just a matter of seconds. The tower block is 22 stories high. There's 10,000 tons of concrete and buildings almost close enough to touch on every side of this mammoth structure. Some, like the Paradox Community Center, are just 10 meters away. And even local school children play in its shadow. They can't afford to get anything wrong. The houses themselves are about 15 metres away. We've got 8 to 10 metres at the back to the Paradox Centre. Probably got a good 30 metres here to the nearest house here. And again, 15, 20 metres to the left-hand side. So it's really confined space to drop it into. There's maybe, I don't know, 8,000, 9,000 tonne of rubble up there that's going to flat pack big time because we're blasting 11 floors and it's all got to have room to get into. Tower blocks are the most common job for the controlled demolition team. During the 60s, they sprung up all over the country. They were built as desirable urban dwellings for the inner city. But times have changed. They've become national eyesores. And residents can't get out of them fast enough. St. Fabian's ex-tenants have now swapped 60s chic for something more compact and bijou and getting rid of the tower will complete the estate's transformation. The main concern for the team is the neighborhood community center, which is located at the back of St. Fabian Tower. It's just 10 meters away and could be completely wiped out if things go wrong. To prevent this, the explosives must detonate in sequence to split the tower block into two distinct parts. The front of the block should fall away first, with the back following seconds after. This should create enough movement to tilt the whole structure away from the community center to safety. The tower has been stripped of windows and fittings, leaving behind just the skeleton of the building. But to determine how much explosive to use, the team has to have a trial run. For the test blast, the team are using 60 grams of explosive. That's about a small cup full of powder on a wall that's about 20 centimeters wide and 90 centimeters deep. What we're doing now is we're doing a test blast on a section of structural wall. The reason we're doing that basically is two reasons. Firstly, to make sure that the amount of explosive we use is sufficient to blow the wall out. And secondly, that the protective measure we take is sufficient to contain the fly. So what we're looking at is putting up enough explosives to crack the wall, but not send it flying around. As the dust settles, Dick gets his first look at the rubble. Well, I'm not a structural engineer, but I think it's fair to assume, even from a novice, that the load-bearing capacity of that wall has been taken out. If you look at the old days, when you got the two extremes, you got John Wayne driving in with a, a chuck wagon full of explosives and lit it with a cigar and it blew the mine out, and then you've got, as I say, Tom Cruise going up the top of the building and doing it with a matchbox. That's reality. That's, that's not stage managed. You, you've seen that. That's what it is. So a small cup of explosive took out one column. 
are armed with this information, the team now know exactly how much explosive to use on the whole building. It's a crucial part of the process. In this tower block, the explosives went off, but it failed to flap back properly. It ends up sitting precariously on a pile of its own rubble, just like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, but less elegant. But explosive demolitions can cause even worse hazards. This may look like a successful blowdown as spectators watch the demolition of a local hospital. But look closely at the screen. Flying debris starts landing in the water, just missing people on the lake. Other spectators weren't so lucky. Pieces of steel were propelled 400 meters into the crowd, leaving some seriously injured and one girl dead. So explosives are critical, and it's vital the team chooses the right way to bring down St. Fabian Tower. The team selects the floors where they'll place the explosives. These are called blast floors. There are 11 in all, and this is where the main impact happens. But if the team get their calculations wrong, it could cause devastation. St. Fabian is 80 meters high, and remember, there are buildings on every side. If the tower moves too far in any direction, it will flatten any buildings in its way. The team have calculated that they need 1,500 explosives placed throughout the tower. Each explosive is put inside a drilled out hole in one of the supporting columns. To bring down the building as planned, the team are using 50 kilograms of dead cord, perfect for thin walls. With the right amount of explosives, then comes the tubing. These interconnecting leads contain a reactive substance that weave their way throughout the building, linking all the supporting columns together. In all, there's 13 miles. That's the equivalent of half a marathon. Add the detonators, and things get serious. These contain delays that trigger the explosives, setting them off in sequence. That means the demolition can be made to blow down different parts of the building at different times. A firing line is then connected to the detonating cord. It's this pink tube that carries the initial spark from the exploder into the building, blowing it down. But in demolition, Nothing's ever straightforward. Under the tower block, there's a major problem, which could turn this blowdown into an environmental catastrophe. St. Fabian Tower was built on top of a tunnel which carries the River Ching, a key water source for the whole area. But the tunnel and the river are now under threat. When the demolition happens, 10,000 tons of concrete will come crashing down on the tunnel roof. It's a massive weight that's forced the team to add these steel struts for extra support. But if things go wrong and too much concrete falls in one place, the additional weight could force the steel struts to buckle. Worse still, the tunnel might collapse completely, sending hundreds of toxic chemicals into the river. This will be an absolute disaster, as it would contaminate the water supply for the whole area. Now this thing starts moving, you get quite a bit of debris in here, don't you? Yeah. You get debris stuck there, the next thing you know you've got a blockage and it starts backing up and you've got raw sewage. Back on site, Mick is working out exactly how much extra protection is needed to stop accidental damage from debris. Well, what we've got is just protection in the rows of containers here because behind this is the nearest building we've got to the tower block. Although we're tipping the tower block away from here, the debris pile's still going to spill up, spill down this way. So we've got containers for the girders set four metres into the ground 
just to arrest the pile of debris as it comes down. These are the homes that are directly in St. Fabian Tower's path if things go wrong. There are over 800 residents being evacuated. Many of them used to live in St. Fabian Tower, but now there's the real prospect that their new homes could be obliterated by their old one. One of these houses is only 15 meters away, and it has to be covered from the front to the back because of the dust expected from the demolition. Around the corner, Soraya Sadat and her family are glad they've had a cover-up job as well. The dust is my main concern, really, because there is a lot of dust to be expected. So I suppose we'll just have to wait and see what the end result is. Well, the kitten, I think we're going to leave him here. They said he'll be safe, so as long as all the windows and doors are shut, then he should be OK. With over 800 residents to evacuate and only 24 hours to go, the pressure's definitely on for the team. Coming up in part two, the moment all explosives engineers dread, with minutes left till blowdown, a tenant goes missing. Early morning, there's only four hours till blowdown, and if all goes well, the tower block will soon be hitting the deck, just like this. The explosives are in, the columns are connected, and the protective wrapping is on. Out on the estate, it's an early start for the residents and the team. It started early this morning. Uh, people started arriving on site around 6 o'clock. There was a briefing so everyone was aware of the responsibilities and who was doing what. And then slowly things start to happen, such as you know the roadblocks, um, setting up the canteens and the alternative accommodation. And it's a, basically a constant clock then, working down to the 12 o'clock deadline when we'll finally press the button. The blowdown must happen at 12. Hitting the deadline is paramount. Roads have to be closed. Gas and electricity have to be cut off, and the police can only be on site for a limited time. The evacuation and cover-up job are taking shape. Deep inside the building, the team are busy making last-minute checks. Can we start checking floor by floor, making sure we've got all the connectors right, everything's connected in, so there's no chance uh, of any of the components not going off. Probably take about an hour to get down the building, but it's got to be done. Everything has to be checked and double-checked because people's lives and homes are on the line. The success of this demolition hinges on the explosives detonating in exactly the right order. A wrong move and all the team's hard work could be undone in seconds with dramatic results. But the team have to put this to the back of their minds as the evacuation of residents begins in earnest. Among the first to leave are Soraya Sadat and her flock, followed by everybody else. But somebody is missing. Hello? We'll keep working on it and I'll get the carpenter. He's on site on standby. So we'll okay. get him to come down. I think get him in now, dude. Yeah, we'll what? get him to come down. I don't what think there's a lady in there. Sorry? What age is she? Um, however, we're near, he's got full grip on it. He can give a name and everything. Every passing second is eating into their precious schedule. Mick's had enough and makes his own call to the evacuation centre. Yeah. Ten anxious minutes pass before the police finally give the all clear. Yeah. Now she's gone. She's in the 30s. Crisis over. It's yeah. time for blowdown. 
Stay vigilant and let's keep everybody 100% outside the zone. The workmen. Dick starts to secure the exclusion zone as the rest of the team begin their final preparations. The clock's ticking as Mick prepares the warning rocket for action. This is the warning shot. It's uh, the exploding rocket we send up into the air 30 seconds before blowdown, just to warn everybody that everything's on schedule. So, uh, just a two and a half inch maroon. Makes a big bang. Probably bigger than the shot itself. Makes two bangs. All eyes are anxiously glued on St Fabian Tower. Final preparations are taken care of. Everyone, yeah, basically told them everything inside the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Block checked. Been in, mixed, been in, yeah. the block. And, and the last connections are made. Two minutes to blow down. I missed the blow down. But Mix still got more tests to go. So just cut, cutting that ready to fire. And just to test the exploder, I'll fire this um, the tubing off that's left. You might just, um, just run it out of it, you might just see the flash. This is the exploder that should spark the firing line, but there's a problem. The exploder has failed. Who's that one? Dick's concerned. It's the last thing they need. Team and the control point personnel. That should click anyway. It's an exploder we've not used for a long time. It's a new one, that as well. Can I use the one we used last week. Second time around, a perfect fire. Ten seconds to maroon. Fire maroon. Our cameras have been strategically placed all around the demolition site. Each one will capture the full impact of the demolition as it happens. The St. Fabian building has towered over Chingford for almost 40 years. Its demise has been a long time coming, but as the saying goes, what goes up must come down. Stand by for the countdown. Ten. Time for the team to take their first steps into the mass of concrete that was St. Fabian Tower. I can't believe there was a tower block there. I know, it's gone. Even the metal protective containers have done their job keeping the debris away from houses. Well, that's a great job. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Amazing. Extend the water's going okay. No problem outside out from the control point. First two criteria, 
if nobody had been hurt and the building come down, it's gone off, I believe, successfully. Um, the third priority is to no damage. That's what we're going to look at now, make sure everything's gone off and there's no damage. It looks like a nuclear winter has hit Chingford. But in some of the streets, the clear-up operation is already underway. Very good. Excellent job. Everything's contained within the protection we put around and we've hardly any damage. We've cracked a window that we know of at the moment and everybody's quite happy. So, excellent job this week. But one of the biggest questions for the team is what happened down in the tunnel. It's a crucial check. The reputation of the team depends not only on the tunnel surviving the blowdown, but also being safe from future collapse. A thorough inspection reveals not a single steel supporting strut was damaged. With 10,000 tons of rubble now practically on their doorsteps, the residents begin returning home. All the houses have survived, and Sarah Sadat, plus her children, are back. No, yeah, let me get inside and have a look. Hang on a minute, Tyson. I feel like I'm in a cloud of smoke. So. It's a relief, I mean, okay, no more block now. <laughs> it's gonna be weird looking out there and Ooh. where's that block gone? Light. More light though. After just two hours, the clear up operation is almost complete. The residents are back and the team start to leave the estate as if nothing has happened. but it's taken two months of preparation. A workforce of 200, 50 kilograms of explosives, 13 miles of tubing, and just five seconds to turn St. Fabian Tower into a huge heap of concrete lying on the ground. <laughs> 